Amen, everyone. I just want to go before the Lord before I share my title. So, Lord, we just thank you. We thank you, Lord God, just for this moment with you, Lord God, for you to expose our weights, our hidden weights, our obvious weights. And Father, I just ask that you give every woman here grace to submit, grace to lay it all down at your cross. And we just exalt you higher. We say your ways are higher than our ways, that your thoughts are higher than our thoughts. So Father, remove every thought that is not likened to your name. We cast down every thought to be focused in on your word. We love you. We thank you. Amen. Hello, everyone. I'm not going to be before you long. Um, Elder Tina always surprises me. She's like, oh, yeah, you're first. I'm like, wow. All right. Uh, welcome to the Breakthrough Sessions. Breakthrough. Um, my session is entitled Unashamed. So I'm going to read a scripture first and then we're going to unpack this. Um, join me in Genesis 3, 8. Yes, word. So while you guys are turning there, um, I'm going to read the scripture first. I always read the scripture first before I start talking because I can go. Genesis 3.8, I'll be reading from the New Living Translation version. Toward evening, they heard the Lord walking about in the garden. So they hid themselves among the trees. And the Lord God called to Adam, where are you? And he replied, I heard you, so I hid. I was afraid because I was naked. Unashamed. At first, you know, I'm like, yeah, I get to preach about being unashamed for the gospel of Jesus Christ going forward in boldness and truth. And the Lord was like, eh, not quite. I was like, okay, God. Um, if you know me, uh, my mom and my sister are here. Praise God. If you know a little bit about me, I am like super into education, into knowledge, into teaching. Um, and so that's how the Lord deals with me. And so unashamed, right? It's like, if somebody asked you what unashamed meant, it's like, yeah, I know what that means. And then they ask you for the definition. It's kind of like, wait, unashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ? It's like, yeah, but what does that mean? I'm a meaning person. I get down to the root of things. And so we're going to break apart unashamed. How do we become unashamed is that we have to deal with the root word, which is ashamed. Um, so the Lord broke down un. Un is a prefix. It's a negative prefix. And so what a prefix does is a small word that's attached to a root word that flips it into something different. Right? So un means not, right? The root word is ashamed. So what does ashamed mean? Ashamed is an old English word derived from the word shame, which simply means for one to feel painfully of humiliation and or distress caused by a consciousness or an awareness of wrong or foolish behavior. So root words related to shame are embarrassment and discomfort. Um, antonyms, words that are not related, not similar, are pride and indifference. Indifference is apathy. Apathy is lack of interest. Are y'all following with me? I'm going to make sure you understand. So, yes. Um, other, another definition the Lord gave me was a loss or a subtraction of respect, esteem, or dishonor. Words related to these definitions are disgrace, discredit, scandal. Antonyms are glory and honor. 
And so the Lord told me that there's two people in this room. Ones who are in shame because of what they have done. And ones who are in shame because of what has been done to them. Pride and indifference will indicate which way you land on the board. And some of us are masking ourselves in pride and lack of interest to cover our shame. So again, going back to these anonyms of pride and apathy, these are the triggers that are showing us where shame can be hidden. So I want to go back to the, the scripture even about um, where Adam and Eve, they ate and they did an act of shame. And what's it say? So they hid themselves among the trees. The Lord said, shame can hide in life. Shame can hide amongst the living. Trees represent life and abundance and growth. And so it's possible to be walking with God and dealing with shame or hidden shame. Uncompartmentalized shame. Adam walked with God. So we're not just talking about people out in the world. We're talking about people that know him, that have sat with him, that have walked with him, that know his voice. I was like, oh Jesus, help me God. But hiding themselves among the trees. And the Lord cried out to him, where are you? What shame will tell you is that God is not crying out, where are you? Where are you? Come, come forth. Come, come to me. What, what has happened? And in the second one, the rest of us are consumed in attaining glory and or honor because of what has happened to us. So that second definition of a person where something has happened to you, so somebody has brought shame to you like a gift. And so instead of dealing with that shame, it's hiding, and now you're a glory chaser. Wow. A glory chaser. Career builder. Attaining much, attaining much, attaining much, attaining much. Wanting to be worthy of honor. Being offended when you don't feel honored. These are areas in which shame could be hidden. As we look even in more into the uh, scripture, and I was studying just shame, um, one of the um, one of the studies I was reading is saying that uh, you know you read the scripture and it says guilt and shame. I'm like, Lord, I feel like guilt and shame are kind of the same, like they're they're closely related. But the difference between guilt and shame is that shame is self identifying; it's relational. So guilt is about what was done. Shame is about how I feel about what was done. And so we're inflicting, shame inflicts the persona. Shame inflicts the identity. Shame inflicts you into your identity to where now you have a jacked up perspective of how you even view and you relate to people. So it affects how relationally, it, it affects your relationships. It affects your worthiness. It is either self-oriented or specific to relational interactions. It hides itself in the presence of God. Wow. <laughs> Shame can hide in life. Shame will place distance between you and God, and shame will encourage you to reject his voice. So God's saying, where are you? Where are you? Where is Adam? He's hiding. He's not, he's rejecting the voice of God. And it does this to create a false perception about your relationship with God. So once it's able to divide into your relationship with God, it can create a vain imagination about your relationship with God. Wow. It could tell you, oh, you're not really tight with him like that. 
Oh, I know you like to intercede, but you can't get up there and preach. You can't go out on the streets and evangelize because you're not ready for all that. That's not you and God. Y'all not tight like that. And so when shame is in the vicinity, it can dictate how you relate with God. Where you once found glory, you are now indifferent. Where you once established honor, you now pride yourself on self-sufficiency and the culprit is shame. So a lot of times when we're like, Lord, I just, I'm not feeling it. I'm like, I'm over it. Worship's too long. I, I'm done pressing it. It's just like, ugh, fidgy, fidgy, fidgy. And that indifference is like, what's really going on? What's really at the root? How are you, how are you tracking with that? The next thing he gave me was that shame affects perception of worth. You start to question, did God really call me? Instead of here I am, you're saying, who am I? Wow. Instead of saying, here I am, Lord. You call my name, here I am. You're saying, who am I to do this? Who am I to say this? Who am I to testify of this? Who am I to tell them that they need to come to the Lord? Shame. This cycle you've been in, professing Christ, but in sin. So, there's another opportunity where God talks about shame. And it's talking about people that profess the name of Christ. And still in their cycles of sin. And it brings shame to the cross. And what the Lord told me was, because I was like, Lord, what is it? Like, am I not showing them the right scriptures? Am I not praying the right prayers? And he said, no, what's happening is it's like that bird of feather flock together situation. Because shame is still in them, they're relatable to shame. They're still holding on to shame. So that shame in them is still wanting to identify with the shame. So they want to preach Jesus, but they haven't purged being shamed. They haven't purged it, so they can't help but be a slave to shame. It's been hidden. <laughs> the cycles of professing Christ but in sin has to do with this hiddenness of what's going on. He then gave me, and you're trying to get to the root of what God has said is that shame is my name because you are still tied to shame, a slave to it. It is hidden amongst life, hidden amongst your fruit, and we're exposing it today. So as we move into unashamed, I want you to know that there is a difference between shameless and unashamed. The world says be shameless. What the scripture says is a shameless person is someone who removes shame and still walks in the ways of the world. They are no longer care about being in shame. They're numb to their shame. So they continue on in shame. That's shameless. Unashamed means not shame. No shame. No disappointment. No discouragement. No discredit. No all of these things. The world is saying, be shameless. Go be shameless. Some of y'all follow YouTube. Shameless Maya, I love her. I'm praying for her. But shameless means I can still be in my pool and my blood and my and all my mess. And I don't care what y'all think. I'm going to live my life to the fullest. And you're dying. Dying. Straight to hell. But you shameless. The proverb says, shame. Foolish is the woman who says they're shameless. Foolish. The shameless life will bring dishonor to the generations. And so you're just packing on more dishonor, more discredit, more shame, more shame, more shame, being shameless. But he says, no, I've taught my daughters to be unashamed. Jesus. 
The gospel truth is that God is not disappointed with you, daughter. God is not humiliated with you, daughter. He is not moved by your prideful and apathetic ways. He deserves to give you life and life more abundantly. Stop worrying about how you dropped the ball or how someone brought shame to you in your season where all you gave was love and devotion. He's vindicating it all. <laughs> this is what the Lord gave me for y'all. Embarrassment has to go. Discouragement has to go. Pride has to go. Apathy has to go. You were made to be unashamed in Christ Jesus. Shame, we have spotted you amongst the trees and we break our agreements with what we've done to bring shame to ourselves. We also break our agreement with shame that others gifted to us and I don't accept it, but I come into the name of Jesus. Some of you have been given shame, whether that's through molestation, whether that's through a, a relationship where someone embarrassed you with adultery. God is saying, don't, uh-uh, I don't receive it. You try to put that gift on my doorstep, but I don't receive it. It's not mine. It's not yours. You are worthy. You are worthy of his love and affection, of his plans for you. Lay down every weight that so easily entangles you and come into the truth and knowledge of Jesus Christ, which is Romans 8, 28. And we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose for them. For God knew his people in advance and he chose them to become like his son so that his son would be firstborn, which many other brothers and sisters. And having chosen them, he called them to come to him and he gave them the right standing with himself and he promised them glory. And what that's simply saying is once God has already chose you. He's just beckoning you to come. And once you come, he'll establish your ways. He'll do all of those things for you. But in order to become unashamed, you have to break those agreements with shame. And so as I'm wrapping up here, what's so profound is I'm like, Lord, I've been battling back and forth. Like, Lord, I really want to just go forth and preach your word and do all these different things. And he said, it's time to break that agreement with shame of not feeling worthy of the call. Of not feeling worthy of the call. I said, Lord, I'm not, I'm not worthy of the call. Who am I to, to study and to preach the word and to lay hands on the sick and they be healed and to lay my hands on my own father and watch him come to life? Who am I to do that? He said, who are you not to be? The devil's been lying to you. for you. I'll do the work for you. And so I'm so grateful to God for this moment. I'm so honored to go forth because honestly, unashamed has to happen before unmuzzled, before unafraid. You have to break your agreement with shame so that you can see God rightly and your relationship with him rightly so that those things are hidden in your fruit. And God is shaking everything that has to be shaken so that you can have the right perspective. When he's saying, where are you? It's not to condemn you. He's saying, where are you? So you can come close so I can establish you. So I can wash you. So I can fill you with power. So I can give life unto you. So I can expose the work of the enemy and take your, your foot out of the foothold. 
household. Some of us are stepping on minds and we don't even know, but if we would pray in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit would be like, go left, go right, back up, move this way. He wants to direct every step, every step, every step. So Father, I just pray even now in the name of Jesus over these women. If you're dealing with shame or shame was just exposed, you might not even know you were dealing with shame, but it was hidden amongst your trees. Father, I thank you for exposing shame today, God. We lay it down on your cross, God, because you've already paid for it. You already bled for it. You already did all the work. You already ascended to hell and came back with the keys. So, Father, I thank you. I thank you for the gospel of Jesus Christ. There's no other way. There is no other way. And I'm just going to close here. Man, I got some friends that are worshiping crystals right now because they're trying to find ways to be healed. They're trying every way around God because they know when they come to God, he's taking everything. He's not just going to deal with the stuff that you're ready to deal with. He's going to deal with everything. And so I just, I just, I, I encourage you even now, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid of what he wants to reveal to you that you've been hiding and you might not feel like you're ready in this season to deal with it. God's saying, but it's better that I deal with it all. I deal with it all. I want it all gone. And so, Father, I just declare that over your daughters, that we will be unashamed. Amen. Not disappointed, not humiliated, not embarrassed. I thank you, God, that we don't have to chase glory, but you give glory. You give glory. If we ask for glory, you'll give it to us. We don't have to chase fame or glory or honor from our loved ones, God, but you give honor where honor is due. That if we would humble ourselves and pray, that if we would humble ourselves and be transparent with you, that if we would humble ourselves and sit before you, that honor would come upon us even like a cloak. I thank you, God, that you qualify the call. And so, Lord, even as I leave this space, Lord God, I pray that today, whatever was said, Lord, let it be impressed upon their hearts. And I just hear the Lord saying, like, enjoy the journey. Deliverance is the children's bread. He doesn't expose the stuff like the world to embarrass you. He doesn't expose things to embarrass you. But it's, it's your inheritance. My, her my inheritance is to walk forward in the boldness of Jesus Christ and preach the word of God. To see many be saved. To be filled with the Holy Spirit.